Hi, we're going to be talking about species diversity today. And species diversity is one uh, way of measuring diversity in an ecosystem. You could have genetic diversity, like this beautiful um, genetically uh, different uh, form of the cheetah, the king cheetah. You can see it's got the different uh, stripes instead of spots. Uh, but we're going to talk about ways of measuring species diversity. Uh, I'm following chapter 16 in the textbook Ecology Concepts and Applications, which was published in 2019, the eighth edition, uh, by written by Manuel Moles and Anna Scher. When we're looking at uh, species diversity, there's really two factors that are important for defining it, and that is the number of species, which is species richness, uh, and then the species evenness which is the, um, the relative abundance of these different species across the community. So uh, whether they are, uh, every species is found everywhere or some species are found more often than others. Here we have two hypothetical forest communities and they both have five species of different trees. Uh, so they have the same species uh, richness, but when you're walking through the one on the left, you're going to uh, be uh, coming across mainly the one kind of pine tree over and over again, uh, with the occasional uh, one of the other four species uh, here and there, but, but really it's dominated by one species. Um, whereas the one on the right, uh, as you're walking through that forest, you're going to see a little bit of everything. So, um, you would consider then as you're walking through uh, the one on the right, the uh, community B, that uh, the species, since they're more evenly abundant, it would be more diverse than the one on the left, species A, where more, most things having to live in the species in community A is going to be living with one one dominant species. And so uh, that impression of higher diversity in community B than you have in community A can be quantified as a, a quantitative index of species diversity. To calculate the diversity index, what we're going to be using is an index known as the Shannon Wiener Index. Uh, this was actually developed as a part of information theory. And information theory was used actually to try to figure out how to get information out of a lot of data where there was a lot of noise. And ecological data has a lot of noise. And the uh, it was used for code breaking because you like maybe you would have all this uh, static stream of noise and you're trying to figure out where's the code, where's the important information. So uh, from where it came from, this particular index then had the uh, initial uh, symbol, and we still use the symbol of H prime to indicate the Shannon Wiener index. And we can compare then the index between two different uh, community types. And it's going to incorporate adding together all the species, but also take into account how evenly distributed they are. So we're going to have to know the proportion of each species in a sample of a community. So if we look at the terms of this equation, the PI is the proportion of species I in the community. So, um, and, the, and the way you're going to just do that is you're going to count up how many individuals you have in this community. So I've got 5, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I got 20 individuals here. And uh, this particular species is only one out of 20. So it would be one divided by 20, which is 0 0.05. Um, and so you're going to do that for each one of your species. So for each species, you'll have its proportion. And then you are going to multiply the proportion by the uh, natural logarithm of that proportion. So we've got the natural logarithm here. And the natural logarithm is a log base e, not a, a not base 10 and not base 2, but base e. And uh, e is, is uh, a constant. So this natural logarithm is actually going to downplay the impact of the dominant species on 
our diversity index. We want something that has more evenly distributed species, a community with more evenly distributed species to end up with a higher diversity index than something that's dominated by one species. So it's gonna take into account every species, but it's gonna downplay the importance of the uh, dominant species by taking their natural logarithms. And it's going to just, the natural logarithm is going to make that number smaller. Now remember, proportions are all less than one. So natural logarithms of proportions are all going to be uh, negative numbers. They're all going to be less than zero. So we're going to multiply the proportion by its natural logarithm for each species. Then we're going to sum that uh, we're going to add those all together for all the species. So that's what the summation is. So we're going to add up from species 1's proportion times its natural logarithm plus species 2 proportion times its natural logarithm all the way up to, in this case, there are uh, four different species in this particular communities. Um, when we um, actually add this all together, remember... The, the natural logarithm is a negative number. So we're going to add up a whole bunch of negative numbers. We're going to end up with a negative number. So we take the whole thing after we've added them all up and multiply it by negative 1. So there's an implied 1 here. Uh, and it just turns it into a positive number because it's easier to deal with a positive number. So the minimum value of H prime is theoretically 0, um, which would be just one species. And then it'll increase as both species richness increases and as species uh, evenness increases. And, uh, and we do a lab on this, so we will be calculating the diversity index of birds, uh, bird communities in the breeding bird survey. The Shannon Wiener Diversity Index is really useful, but it's really boiling down a lot of information into one number. And so we also use um, the relative abundance and the diversity uh, in a graph called a rank abundance curve. And this gets us a lot of, of information that you can see at a glance. And so uh, the way we make a rank, uh, rank abundance curve is we just take our list of species and we put them in order from the most dominant rank number one uh, so the one that has the largest number of individuals to those species that has the fewest number of individuals and that's what we've got here on our x-axis is we've got the rank abundance from the from the most dominant individual to the uh, least dominant interval and then on the y-axis, we have uh, proportional abundance. So that's um, uh, the, the p uh, sub i that we had in the previous example. So that's, that's where you're going to add up how many individuals you had in total and then what proportion of them are each species. And we can also see if we look at this um, particular uh, graph here, we've got a log scale on that so we've taken the we've taken the proportional abundance and graphed that onto a log scale and so when we look at at uh, this closely we can see that uh, how on the, the coastal ponds here um, so that's the blue line that we have one species with very very high um, amount of uh, abundance. So we have one that's up here somewhere around uh, 0.9. So it's like 90% of our individuals were of one species. And then we can see that uh, the rest of the species drop off so that, that when we get down here, uh, these species down here are, are in very low abundance when we read the abundance off. So here we have the, that coastal pond. It's a very steep line, so it's not terribly diverse. But if we go over to uh, the mountain stream here, not only what you can see, if we just look at uh, where the lines end, that it's got a lot of species. It's got a, lot, got a lot more species than the coastal pond did, which had 20, and this has got somewhere between 70 to 80 on this mountain stream. But we can see that uh, on the mountain stream, we start with the, the most dominant species is about... Uh, 0.2 is about 20 percent of the individuals of that species and that we have a much shallower slope so uh, 
we have a much more even distribution of species. So greater evenness is shown at a glance by looking at um, the slope of the line. And when we look at these uh, communities shown here. These are animal communities uh, of caddis flies. So these are uh, in the streams. They, they live in the bottom of the streams and they are um, cleaning up their food from the bottom of the uh, the stream. And uh, the ones on the mountain stream, there were 79 species. And the ones in the coastal ponds were only 18 species. And then those 79 species are obviously much more evenly distributed. And they end up with a uh, much shallower slope on the rank abundance curve. So you get a lot of information quite quickly. So our, our previous uh, lecture was on species abundance and we talked about the log normal distribution. This was on species diversity. We talked about the Shannon Wiener diversity index and the rank abundance curves. And then uh, next lecture is going to be on um, environmental complexity and how that influences uh, the birds or the species diversity and also the idea of uh, different niches and having diversity in the niches or the niches in the community. If you look in your chapter at the end of this section of it, they do have a good concept review question here and it says suppose you sample an area and find the five species of forest trees that were uh, listed in the uh, table that that was the uh, first forest hypothetical community that I had given you and you have the proportions of 0 0.35, 0 0.25, 0 0.15, 0 0.15 and the last species 0.1. Uh, what would be the Shannon Wiener diversity of this community and uh, and you could be able to calculate a Shannon Wiener diversity index. So um, you might want to go through and give that a try.